So Discord API recently released components version two, and it's really cool. And these updates will give Discord bots even more customization options because earlier we were getting bored using the same design again and again, but now you can create a lot of customizations and cool things. And another good thing is that Discord.js has also released an update that supports components version two. All right, so let's see what changes we got based on the new Discord.js update that supports components version two. Let's understand what's new. So here I have three images now. Take a look at the second image. Earlier, we could only customize this much. That's it. For example, this was the title and it always stayed there. We could only add one image in this area and even the thumbnail could only be added once in a single embed and that too, only in that fixed position. Same with everything else, that's all we could do. And after that, the buttons could only be attached along with the embeds, just that. But now look at this message. There's a button added here, then another one here inside the embed and also a file added within the embed. They've attached the file here. And if you want, you can move this file to the top and attach it there too. So all of this is possible now. And not just that, you can even place images here, here, and here. Very interesting, right? So let's go ahead now and see how we can do all of this. So now I'm in my Visual Studio code and I've simply created and opened a folder named components version two. Now I'll be using my disco base package, which gives you a lot of features and makes it easy for you to start building your bot. The link will be in the description. You can check it out. All right, back to the video. So for that, I'll open my terminal and type npx create disco base at latest. Then it will ask us a few things. So we'll quickly go through the setup. And within a few moments, you'll see that everything is fully set up. Now, when we go to the config.json file, we'll need to add our bot ID and bot token, which I'll provide. And here's our complete structure. Now we'll take a look at uh, components version two. Right, so first I'll open the terminal and run the bot by typing no dot. And now our bot is running. If we go check on Discord, yes, it's online. Before we move forward, if you're already using DiscoBase or any other handler, Make sure to go to your package.json file and check your discord.js version. It must be 14.19 or higher. Otherwise it won't support components version two. So make sure of that. All right, now we'll open the SRC folder. If we wanna create a prefix command, we'll go to the message folder, but I personally prefer slash commands. So we'll open the commands folder. Inside that, I'll go to the community folder and create a new file named new-update.js. As soon as I create the file, you'll see that the default structure is automatically generated, and this is the magic of DiscoBase. All right, now I'll change the name and description a little bit. And now let's start exploring components version two. Okay, so now we'll start writing our code. First, let's look at what the text display builder is. As you know, in discord.js comma, whatever we use needs to be defined first. So first we'll go ahead and define text display builder. Nice, now we can use it. To use it, we'll come here and create a variable, const text equal sign new text display builder, which we just defined. Then we'll use set content. Inside this, we can write our text and it supports markdown, which is an interesting feature. For example, if I add a hash symbol, it will become a heading. Now to send this to Discord, we need to write a little more code. So we'll use interaction.reply. Earlier, we would just pass content or only components, right? But now, since we're using components version two, we need to inform discord.js that we're using this version. To do that, we'll add flags and we'll also need to define message flags. So we'll define that too. Then we'll add flags, message flags dot is component version two, something like that. And then finally, we'll pass in components and give it our text component, which we just made here. Now, if I go to Discord and run the command, you can see that everything is displaying nicely. And in the same way, you can use any markdown in Discord using Text Display Builder. All right, so now let's see how to use the separator builder. So first, we'll go ahead and define the separator builder and also separator spacing size. Then we'll create a variable like this, const separator equal sign new separator builder and dot set spacing 
separator spacing size, small or large. If you set it to small, the space between the separator and the text will be less. If you set it to large, the space will be a bit more. After that, we simply go to where we want to use it. If we want the separator before the text, we place it before the text component. If we want it after, we place it after the text. Then, when I go to Discord and run it, the line you see there, that is the separator. If I add this text component after the separator as well, and now show you in Discord, you'll understand it a bit better. This is what a separator is. So now let's look at how to use the section builder. If I show you this image, you can see that on the left, there's just a simple text display builder, but on the right side, there's an image. This is a bit different because this is normal text. It's not an embed. And not just that, instead of an image, you can also add a button. Let's see how. Um, to create a section, first we need to define the section builder and then write const section equal sign new section builder. After that, using dot add text display builder, we can add our text component. Keep in mind that in a section, you can add a minimum of one and maximum of three text components. Now, to add an image, we first define the thumbnail builder and then const thumbnail equal sign new thumbnail builder and then use media and then URL to give the image I'm giving my channel logo URL. You can also add a description to the image or make it a spoiler if you want interesting, right? Then to add this thumbnail to the section, we use set thumbnail accessory thumbnail component we just created. And now the section we just created will be passed uh, as a component to be sent. Yes, again, in one section, you can pass a maximum of three text components in either one button component or one thumbnail component. Now, if I go to Discord and run it, you'll see it's very cool. Our image appears on one side and our text on the other. Now, if instead of an image, you want a button, then just like before, create a button using const button equal sign new button builder. And we'll set custom ID, then button label, and button style. Then go to your section and use set button accessory button to add the button component. Now, if I show you this on Discord, it looks really nice. All right, so now let's see how the media gallery builder works. First, we'll define the media gallery builder, then const media equal sign new media gallery builder darwool. After that, using dot add items, we can add media like this. Add items, media, and then URL. And just like before, you can make these images spoilers if you want to. This way, you can add multiple media images very simply. Then just pass this media component inside the components array. For example, if I place it before the text component, the images will appear first and then the text. Now, if I go to Discord and run the command and show you, you can see it looks nice, right? So now let's look at containers. What are containers and how are they used? Well, you can think of a container as kind of like an embed maybe, because for example, the announcement you see from discord.js is created using a container. But one important thing you should remember is that containers are not exactly like embeds. For example, if you mention a user or use at everyone or at here inside a container, it will ping everyone. So keep that in mind. Other than that, using it is very simple. All the components we've learned so far, if you want to display them like an embed, then you just create a container and put everything inside it. But let's see how. So let's actually try to build this announcement from Discord developers using a container and everything we've learned so far. So looking at it step by step, first there's a thumbnail builder, then a simple text display builder. This whole part is one section. After that, there's an image, again, using Thumbnail Builder. Then we have some text display builders and some buttons. I guess this uses three different sections. Then there's a separator, and again, a text display builder and a file. All right, so now let's start building it. Let's go. So right now, we are in Visual Studio, and here we have the file, which we will use later. Before moving forward, everything else is already defined, but we will define two more things attachment builder and file builder. After that, we'll also define the path in FS packages. 
Now let's start building. First, we'll create a container. Then for this top image, we'll use Media Gallery Builder and give our image URL like this. To add this image to the container, we use container dot, add media gallery components, and pass the component we created. After that, we have the top text. For this, we use text display builder and use set content with discord markdowns to write our full text. To move to the next line, we use slash n, and if we want a gap of two lines, we use slash n and slash n. After writing the full text, we again use container dot, add text display components to add our text to the container. Then we have another image. For that, we again use Media Gallery Builder and provide the image, then add it to the container. After that, we have a text with a button. So first we create the text using Text Display Builder and then use Button Builder to create a link button. Here, I'm just giving a random URL. Now, instead of adding this directly to the container because we want it in one line, we, we use Section Builder, add both components to the section, and then use Container Dot add section components to add the section to the container. The next three lines are the same, so I'll just copy and paste the whole block twice and only change the text. That's done. Now we need a separator. For that, we use separator builder to create a separator and then add it to the container using container dot add separator components. Next, we need another text display builder, but this time the text is smaller Again, we use Discord Markdown and add it using Text Display Builder, then add it to the container. Now, finally, we need to add a file. To do that, first we access the file using its path, then we read the content using fs.promises.readfile like this. After that, we create a new variable using File Builder and set the URL. But make sure the name you give here matches the one you gave in the attachment. Then we use container.addFileComponents to add it to the container. To send the message, we use interaction.reply. First, we use flags to tell Discord that we're using components version two, then we pass the container under components and also pass files using the attachment. By the way, I made a small mistake earlier, so actually it will come like this. Just like we used attachment builder before, we do it the same way here, like this. All right, now I'll open the terminal and use no dot to run the bot. Now, if we go to Discord and run the command, you can see it looks exactly the same. So I hope you learned a lot from this. Also, make sure to join my Discord server. You'll get the chance to talk to other developers and learn new things there. Thanks.